Alrighty, welcome to another Vintage Cube Draft here on my new YouTube channel. Thanks for hanging out. I appreciate you being here. And of course, we're going to be playing the best format in Magic, so wasn't really a hard sell, was it? Uh, as for this pack, ooh, I see a nice place to go. Strip Mine. When I first picked Strip Mine, I'm thinking Lands. I'm thinking Ren and Six, Crucible of Worlds, uh, Oracle of Moldiah, Crop Rotation, and even Dark Depths. So what my hope is is that I take Strip Mine and Wheel Thespian Stage because there's one, two. Three, four, five, six, seven. Yeah, it's a decent chance the stage wheels plus the two duels. If not, maybe regrowth or Leovold perhaps, but uh, happy to start on strip mine and kind of see where we go. Second pick, I think I'm wanting to take Noble Hierarch. The lands decks are pretty frequently green, often splash colors, and I like Noble Hierarch and Ignoble Hierarch and Birds of Paradise in these decks. I don't really like the Llanowar Elves, Elvish Mystic type creatures because you want to tap for other colors. Vindicate's also a reasonable pick with Strip Mine. They actually kind of combine well, but I think Noble is more likely to be the right colors for Strip Mine, less committal into two colors, and Noble is, I think, arguably a more powerful card course depends on your deck oh there's a third pick fast spawn we're in this is this just game like we i'm not saying this is going to work out but i'm saying we're going to go for it so yeah we're definitely taking fast spawn here over i mean the good cards in this pack are jace necromancy maybe indatha triumph if you already have a good reason to be those colors but yeah we're taking fast bond here and here i don't think well you get to see a rarity this almost never happens if you've watched me draft. I'm not going to be taking Underworld Breach. I don't know who the other three people were that also didn't take Breach, but uh, I'm going to take Windswept Teeth. Green fetch lands are at a, such a high premium for this deck. Like, you might look at Tireless Tracker, because it is a good combo with Fast Bond, but green fetch lands make your Oracles and Ramanop Excavators, Crucible, all those effects just completely pop off while fixing your mana. So fourth pick fetch lands is also something I'm really happy with here. Okay, so here I could take a red-green land, which is good with the Windswept Teeth, especially if you play Ren and Six. Could take Natural Order, but I'm kind of looking for a lands deck, not a Natural Order deck. I do think this is a completely reasonable pick, but that's not the direction I'm trying to go. There's also Spring Bloom Druid, but I think I'd rather just have Stomping Ground. Spring Bloom Druid is just okay. I mean, I would play it in this deck, and maybe I'll wheel it. Maybe I'll wheel Eladomri's Call, but I think I want to be Stomping here, and... Now there's a Jiraga Tree Speaker and an Upheaval. Upheaval is actually really good with Fast Bond. Gives you a good high-end card to, to play. And I'm not trying to be the Mono Green Ramp deck. Not out of just stubbornness because I don't want to do it. I also think the Mono Green strategy is a little less good. Plus, we already passed Crater Hoof in Natural Order, so I don't think we're going to be the only one going for it. There's also Knight of Autumn is a pretty reasonable card, and I have a Green-White Fetch. Path is also a strong card. Mm, I don't know. I do like Upheaval in general as one of your few blue cards in the big blue mana deck, and I have Noble. Let's take Upheaval as a speculative pick. Oh, there's a Wasteland. That is perfect. All right, we're snapping off Wasteland. Also, getting Wasteland, what is this, seventh pick, sixth pick, seventh pick, is really nice because that means no one else should be on the lookout for Red and Six and Crucible quite as much as us. Not saying someone wouldn't take it, but... I think we've got a good shot. Probably going to just take Carpluson for us now. I don't have a red card yet, but red and six is the big one. Plus, there's cards like Fable or Lelia that I'd be really happy to play. So let's take Carpluson Forest over like Celestial Colonnade, Damnation, Toski, yeah, whatever. Cards that I'm not all that interested in. Okay, so Loris was still there, and so is Boonbringer Valkyrie and Azorius Signet. So unfortunately, we didn't wheel Thespian stage. We're unlikely to be stage depthsing. I could take Regrowth here. That has some applications. I don't really need another red green land. Definitely don't need a red white land. Not looking like the best Luris deck, and these tend not to be. So, do I want Primal Command or Regrowth? I think I want Regrowth here. I could end up. I could end up in some sort of blue green shell, and Regrowth can be really good in those kinds of decks. Plus, Regrowthing Strip Mine and Wasteland is not actually the worst thing in the world. So, let's actually. Move up people over a little more because I want to separate out fetches and actually I'll do it this way. Separate out fetches and uh, uh, non fetches, basically, or sack lands and non sack lands. Okay, Vindicate Wield. So did Mystical Tutor and Blooming Marsh and Sneak Attack. Sneak is also a reasonable card with three red green lands. 
maybe I just take sneak and uh, kind of just speculate on it. It's not a not a huge lift to just take that. Now there's a gruel signet, which again goes towards the red green theme. I don't like Warren Power Stone much. I might just take Indotha Trium though. This turns Windswept Teeth into a black land and just a tri land in general. Plus, when you have fast bonds, signets get a lot worse. Like you're you're looking to play fast bond and lands, not random signets. All right, uh, I've got a couple speculative cards: Upheaval and Sneak and Regrowth. These these three, but I also have both Strip and Wasteland, Windswept Teeth, and Noble. So a lot of good directions to go. I'll take a Godless Shrine here. Now I kind of wish I'd taken Vindicate over Sneak Attack, but that's just the way the cookie crumbles. Okay, both Eladomri's Call and Spring Bloom Wield, but I think I like Eladomri's Call now because I have this Sneak, remember, and Eladomri's Call to get an Eldrazi into Sneak Attack offers a pretty good amount of... Uh, you know, redundancy, and then depending on the creatures I get, call could be good there too. All right, I'll take the deranged hermit. Probably not. Probably not looking to play that. And yeah, no one's drafting monorail apparently. Okay. So what are we looking for here? Uh, this pack's a little unfortunate. I don't mind an auger of autumn. In fact, I'd be happy to play it. And Woodfall Primus is good with sneak, but I think I'm just going to take Bloodstained Mire. This is a uh, Green, black, red, white land. It's a pretty powerful land. And again, helps with recursion. We haven't seen Crucible, Ren and Six, or Ramanop Excavator go by, so we've got some good options for those. Uh, I mean, at some point, they'll show up, and again, we're kind of cornering the market on the lands that sacrifice. Woodfall might not wheel because of the natural order, derogatory speaker, crater hoof person. But even if it doesn't, I might get back Augur of Autumn. So I've got two green cards I'm, I'm, I'm interested in. Uh... This pack, I could take Opposition to go with the Deranged Hermit. I could take Skyclave or Council's Judgment as just white removal spells. Because my mana is pretty good. Could take Factor Fiction, because that's a combo with Fast Bond, just card draw in general. And it's also kind of a combo with Regrowth. You just churn through a bunch of cards. Not looking too much like Skull Clamp, though. Remember, we have this Deranged Hermit that makes both Opposition and Skull Clamp better. This is, this is a pivotal pick because I could take a blue card draw spell. Opposition, which I haven't really been that impressed with overall. Skull Clamp, which is also kind of nice with Fast Bond. And I have Eladomri's Call. All right, I'm feeling Skull Clamp. I don't get to Skull Clamp very often, so I'm very interested in doing that. Terrain Shermit in. Oh, easy Crucible. I have Strip, Waste, two fetches, Fast Bond. Yeah. I Look, I love Caracas and all that, and there's a Crop Rotation and a Court of Bounty. A lot of cards I'd be interested in, but if I take Crucible, the odds that I wheel Crop Rotation go up a lot. This pack is less exciting. We're not in the Frantic Search territory, though. Whoever took Breach should have taken that. Elvish Mystic has gotten better. I have Skull Clamp now. Uh, that makes Elvish Mystic a lot more intriguing. There's also Hornet Queen. But the big green seven drops, I feel like you have a lot of outs to we like to pick those up later. Like it's not like Hornet Queen's that much better than Avenger of Zendikar. Or there's a Woodfall Primus, you know, even though the Skull Clamp combo's there. There's also Metamorph. Metamorph's kind of interesting with uh, not with Skull Clamp, but with the Range Hermit and with Eladomri's Call. Okay, I think I'm going to go with the Metamorph here. There's also Winter Orb, but Winter Orb might actually just be bad in this deck. Who knows? <laughs> Utopia Sprawl I generally like in these decks, but now that I have Skull Clamp, I'm a lot more inclined to want Elves. Maybe I should have taken Elvish Mystic. I wouldn't have been surprised. But Metamorph, Eladomri's Call is a nice combo. There's also a Maelstrom Pulse, which is a fine card. Kenrith, which is kind of just a fine card. Same with Kitchen Finks. I'm interested, I think, in Mesmeric Fiend. I don't think I want Ancient Tomb that much, though. Ancient Tomb is a really powerful card. I have, what, Crucible it's good with. It's good with Hermit. It's actually kind of good with Skull Clamp. No, Ancient Tomb is just a busted card. Let's just take let's just take really high power level cards. Oh, definitely in for Elvish Reclaimer to go get my Strip Mine. I mean, Bayou's not bad, but both my fetches already produce green-black, so even though the Windswept Teeth, it's tapped. But no, it's actually, you can get untapped black with Godless Shrine. Yeah, there's no... No strong reason to to do that over over just taking Elvish Reclaimer here. And here's a Finale of Devastation. It's kind of nice that you can get Elvish Reclaimer for, for just three mana total. There's also a Tithe Taker, which is a really good combo with Skull Clamp. I think Tithe Taker is a good disruptive card. Look, this combos with Skull Clamp because it gives you two creatures to clamp. 
Against control decks, it annoys them because it makes their instants cost more. And against aggro decks, especially mono red, it's a pretty good blocker. So I think I'm in for taking some tithes. I don't think I want Survival of the Fittest. I'm probably not going to have enough creatures to reliably do that. Not a big fan of just casting Terastodon. I do have Sneak. I could also just take Ash and Rider for the Sneak combos. At this point, I'm probably not playing Upheaval, but I could easily support Sneak because it's a good way to convert all the extra cards from Skull Clamp into action. I don't like Horizon Canopy all that much. Even with Crucible, it's, I think, kind of kind of mediocre. Let's take Ash and Rider because that's actually a good clamp target. And then now Augur of Autumn is perfect. I think better, yeah, we are not. We don't even have anything to time of need for. I do like Elspeth Conqueror's Death as well, but given where I'm at, Augur is looking great. Ooh, Skyclave Wield? I don't even know that this is worse than Council's Judgment, which was also in the pack, so happy with that. Oh, I'm going to take Yawgmoth here. As, as much as I like Overgrown Tomb, this is like a second Skull Clamp. It turns your creatures into cards. It makes this throwaway deranged hermit that we got really late really strong. Okay, now we definitely take Hornet Queen. And, oh, Utopia Sprawl came back. All right, I'm not turning that down. I don't think I want Orcish Lumberjack, though. It is cute. I think Utopia Sprawl is good. Let's just hate, hate on Fire Blast. No one wants the heartbeat anyway. Okay, I, I'm, I'm liking what I'm seeing. I would love to see a Zurin Orb. No one else at the table is going to want it. But Fast Bond, Zurin Orb, Crucible is infinite life, infinite mana. So that's pretty good. Uh, Oracle of Moldiah would be really strong. Rendon 6 would be a nice duplicate crucible. Looking really good on my mana. Just having two fetches, a tri land, and a stomping ground kind of covers all my bases mana wise. Wouldn't mind a few more skull clamp combos, but uh, overall I like it. Something like Swords to Plowshares would, wouldn't be bad. Oh, there's the Zornorb. We're going to try to wheel that. And oh, then we get to take Demonic Tutor, which is a backup strip mine, backup crucible. Obviously works with Sneak. And then, uh, you know, we can assemble the Zernor Vaspon combo by... If Zernor doesn't wheel, I don't know what's going on. This pack is strong. There's Vendillion Click, Resto, Deep Forest Hermit, Birds, Collective Brutality, Triumph, Sheldock. I'll be very disappointed if uh, Zernor doesn't wheel. Oh, there's the Renin Six. There's also a Prismatic Vista. There's also a Palace Jailer. All these cards are pretty busted. I think... As much as I don't like passing Prismatic Vista, I think I can... I can afford to not take it. <sighs> am I supposed to just take Renin 6? Or am I supposed to take Palace Jailer and hope Renin 6 comes back? It's not zero that this will wield. No, who else should want it? It's such a good card for me, but so is Palace Jailer. And I have both Eladomri's Call and Demonic Tutor. There's also Mind Twist, but I'm just going to take Palace Jailer and hope for the best here. Ooh, Oracle Moldiah. I will take that one too. Over like Liliana. Tropical Island doesn't even actually do anything for me. Okay, okay. That was a tough pick, the Palace Jailer Vista Renin 6. If if Renin 6 doesn't wheel, I would kind of wish to have just taken Renin 6, but yeah, what can you do? Not really looking for Raffello so much in this deck. Mog does not actually crazy because I have a couple ways to cast it early. Not into Cabal Therapy here. Plateau is interesting because it just adds another red-white source for my sneak slash Eladomri. Oh, I have tons of white cards. I was also Recruiter of the Guard. And one of the reasons I like Recruiter, I think, is it can get Skyclave, Oracle, Palace Jailer. Uh, can't get Yawgmoth, sadly. Can even get Hornet Queen and Metamorph. Yeah, and you can Skull Clamp the Recruiter. That's, a, that's enough, I think, overall. I'm pretty happy with this Ancient Tomb pick, by the way. The way this has worked out, Ancient Tomb has been really good. I do like Esper Sentinel. I don't mind. Nah, this isn't looking like the best Breach deck. I mean, I do have Ashen Rider, but that's about it. I also like Cathar Commando, but I think I'm just going to take Sylvan Library. With a couple of fetch lands, Sylvan is such a great way to, to just make sure you, you get access to a bunch of cards. Really good against control decks. And this deck's looking pretty solid against aggro with like Tithe Taker, Apparition, Augur. Well, not Augur. I thought that was Knight of Autumn, but yeah, Augur is medium against aggro. Palace Jailer can be very good, and so can just Deranged Hermit, Ashen Rider sort of deals. I'm liking where we're at. This is this is a this is a good lands deck. If we can get another couple of things here. Okay, so now we have the option between Tide Hollow Sculler as a good disruptive piece, Ulamog to pair with Sneak Attack. Um Ball of Omens is medium. Don't think Meat Hook Massacre is where we're at. Uh, so do I want Tide Hollow Sculler, which is an effect I wouldn't mind having. 
Or do I just want to take an Ulamog just to make this sneak good? I think with Eladomri's Call and Demonic Tutor, I think Ulamog seems pretty good. We're a fairly consistent sneak deck as well. Like the sneak pick actually worked out pretty nicely. Yeah, this is this is looking good. We're not really missing anything. I would really like that Zern Orb to wheel. We have uh, three picks left till we find that. Ren and six alt wheeling is also a really big sweat. Ooh, pattern of rebirth. So when enchanted creature dies, you can search for a creature and put it onto the battlefield. So I put it on something and then I demonic tutor or sorry, I skull clamp it. Or sack it to Yawgmoth. Yeah, that actually seems good enough. I'm going to take it over Dark Confidant and Thalios, funnily enough. But Pattern of Rebirth to get Ulamog or Hornet Queen or Ashen Rider. Though I guess getting Ulamog, you don't get that cast trigger still. Pattern's interesting. Don't mind it. Now there's Eternal Witness, which works nicely with Skull Clamp and getting back things like Demonic Tutor or random creatures that have died. There's also Beside You, which has been solid, but... I think you're not not critical, and then this isn't really a triumph that helps me. So let's just take Eternal Witness. Okay, Zernorb did wheel, and I've got to go for it. I mean, as much as a Deep Forest Tournament and Resto would both be good, I'm not above it. Ah, oh, Ren and Six didn't wheel. Yeah, that is unfortunate. Palace Jailer's so good, though. And I already have a Crucible, so... Let's take Nurturing Peatland. We're not going to be... I don't think we're going to be in the business of casting Chandra of Double Red... Trinket Mage for Zernorb and Skull Clamp is cute, but I have no ways to fix blue very easily. I think we just take the, the green black land. I'll probably take Flicker Wisp now, because Flicker Wisp is good with a lot of my different cards. I do like Endurance as well, but that's not where we're at. All right, I'll take Magda. Okay, the only the only disappointing thing is we didn't wheel Ren and Six, but I think other than that, I like everything that worked out. I do need to make some cuts, though, so we'll we'll have to... Have to look to see what doesn't make it. I, I kind of like all these creatures. Uh, Hornet Queen might be my worst one. Oh, Cathar Commando is also interesting. I mean, there is Through the Breach, but I already have Pattern and Sneak Attack and Pattern. Oh, Skuller Wield too. Okay, well, let's see where we're at. I kind of feel like this is going to be difficult. I might have to, I'm just going to ax the regrowth actually. Oh, and last pick, Thalia. I might not main deck Thalia, but also I might. Let's 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 go to deck building. This is this is going to be intriguing. I'm probably not going to be able to afford to keep Hornet Queen in my deck, am I? Okay, so let's take out the lands. There are a lot of them. So this is 29. So 29 cards. I need to put it. I need to cut like six or seven. Okay, I should probably take cut Thalia and just sideboard that one in. Probably have to cut Utopia Sprawl. I do like Utopia Sprawl, but I have Fast Bond and Noble as acceleration, and I'm already I already just have to make make some tough cuts. Also, my curve isn't super high. Like discount the big creatures because I'm I'm gonna be sneak cheating those in. Okay, so and I can cut the Hornet Queen. I think Deranged Hermit kind of does its job better. But I have so many creature tutors, right? Because I have Eladomri's Call and Demonic Tutor and uh, recruiter. So every creature, and that's part of the reason I think the Palace Jailer pick over Ren and Six, I still kind of stand by it. Even if I knew Ren and Six wouldn't wheel, Palace Jailer just is so messed up. So do I have to drop one of the combos? Let's see, what, I, what would happen if I dropped Sneak? I would take out these four cards. And what does this get me? Well, I still have Disruption with Tide Hollow Sculler, Tithe Taker, Cathar Commando against non-creature decks, against creature decks, I mean, Skyclave's kind of both, which is why it's so good, but against creature decks, I have Skyclave, uh, Palace Jailer, Yawgmoth, and that's not too bad. I still have the Fast Bond, Zernorb, Crucible combo, and I think with a Demonic Tutor to go get any of the pieces and Eternal Witness to get back Demonic Tutor, that doesn't sound bad. I also have a lot of card draw. Like, eventually, I, I could skull clamp a bunch, assemble the combo, get a bunch of mana, get a bunch of life, and just put a bunch of stuff into play, basically. <laughs> That's where Sneak would come in handy. Like, this gives me a good, powerful light, late game when I'm uh, doing a bunch of uh, finicky, you know, comboing stuff. Is it, How big of an issue is the mana with Sneak? Well, I have four free red sources. This plus a mountain... I, 
I don't even know if I would need a mountain. I could play a mountain or not. Let's say if I even didn't play a mountain, I'd have four red sources for a sneak, plus an elvish reclaimer, and then a bunch of ways to like just draw lands. Cathar Command is also a card that could go out. Okay, I think, as weird as it sounds, I think I actually want the Thalia. Thalia has just such a big effect on the game. My spells are mostly cheap, and I don't have that many of them. So I think I'm going to start without Sneak. I'm going to start with Thalia. I could also play 18 lands, because I've got three colorless lands. Thalia is it, it's just a messed up card, though. Because my mana's got to be great, right? Let's say, when you're not playing... When I'm not playing uh, red, I've got three tri lands. These three are all tri lands. And then green, white, black, green. And then I have the three colorless lands. And an ancient tomb definitely looks good enough here. So if I play these, if I'm adding, let's say I'm playing 17 lands, I'm adding nine. I'll have three, four. I'll probably want. Yeah. Yeah, I can play Yogmoth. Yogmoth, I think, is going to be good enough with all these cards. All right. I think I'm okay doing that. Let's see. So if I did this, I would play no islands because of a metamorph. Three planes, so uh, three, three, two. Let's say if it's four, three, two, I end up with seven, eight green sources, three, six, seven white sources, and two, seven black sources. I can probably go down one and up one white because, yes, Yogmoth's double black, but... I think I've got enough. I have enough ways to draw cards that I should be okay there. This is four. This is eight. Nine white sources with noble. Eight green sources. All my green sources get more so I, white and black. So I think something like this. So the question is, do I want to cut a card for just another planes? Like would that would it, would another planes be better? Also, if if the crucible fast bond Zernorb thing doesn't work with a demonic tutor then I'm a little skeptical of it. I'm not saying the combo is good, but I want to try it to see if it's good. Also, it's only one card. I, I would be playing Fast Bond and Crucible anyway. And against some matchups, having just Zernorb in play with Oracle and Augur is, is, is nice. So, yeah, this doesn't seem like it's too costly. There's also Utopia Sprawl as a card, which I could be making a mistake by leaving out. I could definitely believe that. Is it possible that I don't want Tithe Taker? It is really good with Skull Clan. Kind of bad otherwise, but even just playing Tithe Taker, Thalia, Flicker Wisp, Skyclave, just play a bunch of beatdown creatures. All right, let's try this. Let's try this. I think this deck, I mean, or the only thing that this deck was really missing is had I wheeled Ren and Six, I would have built a mana base to accommodate that. And had Thespian Stage wheeled and I saw Depths later, which I don't even think I saw Depths, but presumably the stage person sniped it. Having the stage depths combo when you have uh, Elvish reclaiming your deck is nice. Oh, crop rotation didn't wheel either. So someone else was even drafting lands at this table. But I don't think that ended up being a huge problem. Also, is it maybe worth playing Pattern of Rebirth in this deck even without the sneak package? Probably not, because the best thing I'm getting is Palace Jailer or Deranged Terminator or Yogmoth, or maybe Metamorph. That's not bad, but you have to go through the trouble of paying four mana, landing it on a creature, and then being able to sacrifice the creature. And that's uh, that's a bit tough. Uh, <laughs> immediately draws Zuranorb, and it's terrible. All right, all right. I still think this hand's okay, but but my suspicion level of the Zuranorb combo has gone up. Maybe this is better in a... Maybe that combo's better in like a time twister sort of scenario where you just have, you know, a bunch of draw sevens and stuff. I mean, this draw still has Flicker Wisp into Yogmoth, and uh, we'll, we'll see. Playing against White Weenie, maybe? It's not like I really want to just run Flicker Wisp out, but, I mean, here we are. <laughs> They're going to Mana Tithe me? I guess not. Here, I'll threaten Mana Tithe against them. I could actually play Zernorb in case they play a Wasteland. I might be giving up on two life. But against a White deck that, that might... That could just have like Leonian Relic Order and or Loran giving them a free target seems a little dicey. Bone shards discarding a shieldred. That's a weird play. Alright. I guess I'll play Yogmoth. I kind of feel like they're about to reanimate a shieldred. But they're so close to just casting it. Why didn't they just cast it? Okay, Chupacabra. I need to draw not lands. Oh, that's not a land. Okay. What am I getting here? 
Uh, hold on. I know what I'm getting here. Palace Jailer. Palace Jailer is a messed up card. And we're just going to get Palace Jailer. Where'd you go? Because I can go Ancient Tomb. And yes, there's a bit of a risk by exiling a Chupacabra, but getting to draw an extra card every turn. Let's just play the Zern Orb. That, that way, if they duress us, we don't lose the Zern Orb. Um, the, you know, at this point, we do a Skyclave. And uh, yeah, maybe they'll play a Wasteland or Strip Mine or something like that. So now in order for them to, to take the Monarch back, they have to hit me with a creature, which is pretty difficult, given that they have no creatures in play and I have a creature in play. Obviously not impossible, though Skyclave helps. I'm still really confused as to why they discarded Shieldred. It feels like they have a reanimation spell. It's the only thing that really makes sense to me. A White Plume. Okay, it's a risky move because they have initiative now. If they don't have a removal spell or another creature, then I'm going to go Skyclave your White Plume and take the initiative. But I kind of feel like they mu they must. I mean, maybe they don't. Oh, there's fast bond. Okay, we got two thirds of the combo now. Let's do this. Skyclave your white plume. I mean, if if this works, I feel like I just win. Oh wow, is this is this work? Okay. Okay, I guess I'll get a planes here. No, uh, my double black cards in my graveyard. But actually, I should still get the swamp because what I think I'm gonna do is I'm gonna crack this. Well, I'm going to play Fast Bond, play a land, and I think I crack the Nurturing Peatland, because I could draw Crucible here. Oracle of Moldiah. Mm, let's play the land anyway. And let's just pass. Obviously, I can't play that. Ooh, there's a Skull Clamp. I mean, I guess I have nothing to clamp right now, but I'm feeling good about this game anyway. Sk Smuggler's Copter is a little dangerous, because it can take back all the Initiative Monarch stuff, but I feel like I'm... I'm going to do great here. This is Scry 2, so seems like it's pretty easy for me to bottom all these, draw Wasteland. Oh, they are going to get to take back their uh, their initiative and Monarch, uh, but I guess I am drawing uh, a Deranged Hermit. Okay, so let's go Equip to Palace Jailer. So what I'm going to do here is, oh, are they thinking of killing it in response? Let's see. So I think I attack with these. If they kill the Skyclave, then they can get a blocker, but then it blocks the 3-1, and that still works out for me. And then after post-combat, what I'm probably going to do is put the Skull Clamp on the Oracle of Moldiah, because I think that's the card they're most likely to want to kill. Okay, so they killed that. So they get a 3-3. Three, three. I mean, they can't block here, right? I mean, I guess they, they're allowed to, but it seems like giving me two cards is tough. Oh, and then I drew Strip Mine, so let's do Strip Mine. Okay, I'm, I'm actually not unhappy with the Zern Orb right now as things turn out. Let's play Windswept Teeth. Let's crack it. Go to 10, because now I, I the extra lands off that is really nice. Oh, now I get to play Bloodstained Mire. Let's crack it, go to eight, get it, God the Shrine, I guess. Oh, there's the Crucible. Uh, so one, two, three, four. So I can't play Crucible this turn, sadly. Which means I don't think I pay the life here, because but I will play Deranged Hermit. Go to six. And then I mean I guess well, no, there's no there's no real way. I actually want to leave Crucible on top because I don't want them to be able to make me discard it. So I'm just going to strip mine of planes here. And then if they have... Uh... Oh, I guess I was drawing it anyway off the thing. Well, there's the Eternal Witness to get it back. <laughs> here it goes. So I guess now if they have a creature, which isn't a very hard ask, they get to attack with the Copter. They take Monarch and Initiative. Palace Jailer's effect on the Ravenous Chupacabra ends. It comes back into play, probably kills my Oracle of Moldiah. And then next turn I get to draw my deck and add infinite mana. And I guess I, I just need to worry about getting decked at that point. But I get to strip all their lands too. 
I guess I get to strip all their lands and probably kill anything they have of relevance between Yawgmoth and Skyclave, with the only limiting factor being I have 14 cards left in deck and I don't want to deck myself. Yeah, the Skull Clump's actually not going to do anything this game, as it turns out. I mean, that's not true. It drew me two cards to, to get me kick-started here, but I don't think Skull Clamp is going to be... I do not believe Skull Clamp is going to go on the stack this the rest of this game. Also, when they take initiative back, they get to scry two. Not a big deal. Maybe put two counters on this, which is probably getting skyclaved here. I guess I can't, I don't have infinite access to my graveyard because I have eternal witness and I have, uh, and I can get back one card, which is probably skyclave. Oh, I guess I can get back flicker wisp, flicker wisp the witness to get another card, but that takes a half turn. Also, if they don't have a creature, then this, the whole discussion is kind of moot, but I assume they do will play a creature this turn. They know about the Crucible. They know about the Eternal Witness. Okay, so they're exiling to play Grief. They're going to get to Crew as well. Yeah, I get to discard Crucible. I guess I have to regrowth the Crucible then. Here's where a recurring Nightmare would have been nice too. Okay, this goes away. They get to attack. I go down to three. Even though I have Zernorb and effectively infinite life, I do have to kind of watch out so I don't just randomly die. I still am not understanding the Shieldred discard. None of the cards they've played so far have really explained it either. Like, I could buy that they only had one Swamp and then they drew the Swamps later. That's fine. But, no, okay. Uh, but given what we've seen, it still doesn't really make sense. All right, so they get there. They get to immediately get the Monarch. Get the Chalupa Cabra back. Killing Deranged Hermit. Actually, I think I'm going to pay the Echo for Deranged Hermit because I've got a... Well, actually, can I afford that? Let's see. If I pay the Echo, that's five. Eternal Witness. Yeah, I know. I can Eternal Witness Crucible. Because remember, with Zernor Fast Bond, sack a land, gain two, replay a land, take one. That's in, As you can do the math, infinite life, infinite mana. Unfortunately, I don't have access to anything else in my graveyard, assuming I use Eternal Witness. So I guess we're going to see what's left in my deck pretty soon here. My Bloodstained Mire gets no other cards at this point. I guess it only has three targets to start. Windswept Heath doesn't get that much more. Not that it really matters. I don't need to take cards out of my deck. So I get to Scry 2. And let's see what their last card is. Recurring Nightmare. Okay. So now they get to put a Shieldred into play. Sure. And they draw a card and gain two life. Okay. Draw. I do think I want to pay Echo here. Draw. Okay. Go to one. Zern Orb, Sack, a Forest. Go Eternal Witness. Crucible of Worlds. I'm at three. All right, I go one again. Sack this. Crucible. And then now I'm at three, so let's just make sure I don't randomly sequence poorly and kill myself. So that's actually Zernorb. Zernorb. Nice. I like how it moves my uh, board around all, all, uh, all willy nilly. Strip mine your swamp. Strip mine. Strip mine your planes, strip mine. Okay, so killed all their lands. Let's just get that off right off the top here. Zernorb all my lands just to again make it make it such that I don't randomly kill myself. The the could go without the <laughs> the movement of the of the board over and over again, but you know, just magic online things I guess. Okay, let's uh tap this or an orbit. So what I want to do first is I want to kind of figure out what's left in my deck. So let's play Windswept Teeth. It doesn't really cost us anything. So cards left in my deck. I have Metamorph, Thalia, Cathar Commando, Augur of Autumn, Recruiter of the Guard. Oh, I can Metamorph Eternal Witness as well. Okay, so I've got a couple ways to, to do things. So let's start... I, I was wrong about skull clamping. We are, in fact, going to be skull clamping here. Because that's the only way to move forward from here. So I'm at 10. i got to make sure not to die to, to, to Shieldred with skull clamp either. 
<laughs> okay. Uh, let's just Zernorb all my lands away. This is cool. All right. I take back everything I said, Zernorb. You're, you're, <laughs> you're cool. You're cool. Uh, let's Eladomri's call. And now we can metamorph. What's the best way to do things? Because we can Cathar Commando the, the Smuggler's Copter. All right, yeah, let's just go get Metamorph. Lose two, lose two. Play Metamorph. Copy Eternal Witness. And Eternal Witness back. I don't want Palace Jailer because I don't want to be locked into drawing. So I think I'm just going to get Skyclave. Yeah, so I'd like to use Eternal Witness's ability. Planes, I'm at 14. Yeah, I'm, at, I'm not in danger of just randomly nugging. Also, this combo plays out quickly. Like, it's not a lot of clicks. Because now I go Skyclave. Skyclave, the Shieldred. Yeah, they're done. So what I was going to end up doing is Skyclave, Shieldred, Smuggler's Copter gets killed by Cathar Commando. Uh, play, th draw, take a couple draws to try to hit Thalia and then attack them to death. Uh, though I guess the I would get Monarch, so maybe I wouldn't even draw to try to hit Thalia. All right, I don't want Sneak Attack against Black-White Disruption because they, they pick apart your hand. You want the most consistent cards. It's actually possible that I want Regrowth here. Thalia does not actually look good against them. So let's just go with the Regrowth here and fire it off. All right, they were done sideboarding as well. So what do we got here? Uh, all right, a Keepable Hand. I would like to draw another green source because then I have Augur Fast Bond. So, oh, there's a green source. Let's go turn one Fast Bond. Peatland. And then I'm actually going to pay an additional three life, basically, to <laughs> four life to play a Cathar Commando because I think that's okay. I could have basically played this tap to get around playing it, but. Let's go Cathar Commando, the Rando Commando, and then draw and hit and play Augur of Autumn. No reason to play my land yet. Not that it matters too much. Fetch land? No, Tithe Taker. All right, play my land, pass the turn. And if they kill Augur, no big deal. If they play a creature this turn, it's going to be ugly. I'm going to Palace Jailer them. Also, I could just hit a stream of lands off Augur here, and that would be sick. Uh, no lands. Let's send for five. I think I just play the Palace Jailer now. That's why Palace Jailer is so sick. There's no creature in play, and it's still worth doing. I'm kind of getting the sense they have like a Wrath of some kind. But even if they do, at this point, it doesn't really matter. Like, if they go land Damnation, then uh, I still have Monarch. And then I play Oracle and I have Oracle Fast Bond as well. I mean, they've got to play something. This is cube. You can't do nothing for four turns and have it work out well. Meat Hook Massacre, maybe? No, that doesn't kill the or Augur. So that would be less good. Oh, Chupacabra killing Augur. Okay. Uh, well, I can't really uh, pass up the chance to Oracle into some lands. Didn't Oracle into lands. I think we're going to attack with Cathar Commando. Offer the trade here. So the reason I want to offer the trade here is with when I have Monarch going, you really want them to have zero creatures in play because that means nothing wrong can happen. I don't want to attack with two creatures because then they just take five, kill the Oracle attack, and take the Monarchy back or overthrow the Monarchy, as it were. But I also think attacking with nothing is just kind of cowardly because I'd rather get these off the board. So this punishes them if they don't block and they don't have a good follow-up because I have two blockers back. And there is a bit of a downside of attacking with the, or trading commando, because this is a, a little bit better of a creature than Chupacabra, but if they have zero creatures in play, I can just start attacking them. If they have more, it's a little more dangerous. Okay. Shieldred is pretty annoying, actually. But I guess I have an answer to that. So let's go, uh, hold on. I'm just gonna take all the damage, I guess. Tithe Taker, so they can't even have any responses. Metamorph, Copy Palace Jailer. 
Palace Jailer or Shieldred. See, look, now I can attack for four. And now I have Lethal out. Uh, still have yet to play an extra land off this Oracle or <laughs> Augur of Autumn, but that's okay. Now am I getting meat hooked? Kind of feels like I am. Yeah, all right. I get a token. So they're at 12. Let's attack for one. I could play Deranged Hermit. I kind of want to just get start getting some cards because I can also play Sylvan after this. They get, they get to game life here. That's fine. Regrowth and Recruiter of the Guard. Let's just play Sylvan. And then next turn I can Regrowth Palace Jailer if they play a creature. I mean, I mean I'm assuming I'm drawing a land between Sylvans and stuff. Vamping. Uh-oh. That's a little scary. A haste creature would be really bad for me. I feel like I should be winning more this game, but... I somehow managed, like, the rest of my deck is, like, all lands. I think my, the rest of my deck is more than half lands. Yeah. <laughs> I have 12 lands in the in the, in the the 22 cards. White Plume. Uh, okay. Okay. I don't know that that's quite good enough to win the game from here, but we'll see. Initiative is a powerful effect. I think I should be able to take initi the initiative back soon enough here. If they don't have another creature this turn, I, I'm feeling very good about my chances because <laughs> as funny as it is, I think I'm going to regrowth the uh, the White Plume. Uh, or not the White Plume. Well, yes, the White Plume, the Metamorph. Put on top. Definitely not paying any life to Sylvan. Uh, Phyrexian Metamorph. <laughs> Land. Go down to five. Metamorph the White Plume. Get a Forest. Play the Forest. I'm taking one, but I get to play Noble, which I think is worth it. Because I'd take one if I tap the Peatland anyway, so I might as well put it into play. I'm on four. I actually need to find that Xurinor pretty soon here. They have to have two removal spells to get through. Um, the Shieldred is not coming back unless they hit me. But if they hit me, I'm basically dead anyway, so that's that's not as much of an issue. They, they can attack. I block here, and I'm going to take one off of the uh, Meat Hook Massacre trigger. This puts me to three. But I think that's okay still. Okay, I'm at three now. And they're going to bolt me? Ugh, gross. Truly gross. Or chain lightning me. I feel like I'm dead. They were way too fast to tap that mount. Oh, Grim Lava Mancer? Oh. Okay, okay. We're in it. Uh, let's scry two. Bottom. I think... I mean, I guess I, I should put it top to get rid of that Grim Lava Mancer. Top. Sylvan. Put on top. Put on top. I have a lot of mana. What am I going to get? Is the question. I kind of want to... Well, let's go Recruiter of the Guard. Yes, I think I get Eternal Witness. And then I'm going to Skull Clamp the Recruiter. Because I really want to just find Xurnorb. They gain a life. That's fine. I feel like if I find Xurnorb, it's going to be really hard for me to lose. Um, land. Haven't played a second land this turn. Skull Clamp. They gain a life again. Okay. Skyclave, your Grim Lava Mancer. And then just to prevent, I'm going to take one going down to two, but any burn spell kills me anyway. I think. Uh, I guess I'm going to go to one off and off a trium. I think that's okay. There's Crucible. That doesn't really do much. There, I have two cards left in my deck, basically. Demonic Tutor and Zern Orb. And if I can find either of them, uh, I, I think I cut off my opponent's realistic ways to kill me. I think it's worth playing Reclaimer. Not that they have a removal spell, clearly, but... Just in case they had an end of turn removal spell, I didn't want to have that happen. So here, 
Yeah, I'll get a treasure token off stash. That's fine. It's going to be pretty hard for me to miss this turn. Not impossible, but hard. Okay, put back, put back. Demonic Tutor. Okay, Zernorb MVP. <laughs> the way at least this matchup has played out, I've been really happy with the Zernorb. Crucible. All right. Let's strip all their lands first. I guess I don't have the strip mine yet, do I? But we'll 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 get there soon enough. Play my land, play my land. Remember, I have an eternal witness at some point too to to get stuff. Oh, I can I can strip I can strip mine. I can just do this. Get strip mine. Sack it to Zuranorb. <laughs> yeah, this deck's this, deck, this combo's nice. This, this combo's actually really impressing me. All right, that was round one, and uh, oh boy, that uh, that kind of played out like we were hoping, right? We like did some things, disrupted them with like skyclaves and various other removal spells, palace jailers, and then uh, at some point assembled Zuranorb strip mine or Zuranorb crucible fast bond to just gain life, basically draw my deck. Strip all their lands, put a bunch of creatures into play, and that that's gonna win in most such scenarios. Also, I can get an infinite life, so even if they like had a flyer out that I couldn't deal with, it really wouldn't be an issue. I think I think I run myself a drink. Hope you'd agree. But uh, yeah, that was cool. Obviously, the first hand was like four lands, Zernorb, no other combo pieces, and you're looking at it like, thanks, Zernorb. But at the end of that, you saw at the end of that game, Zernorb was the card I wanted most, and even without the Crucible combo. I had such an overwhelming board presence that a Zernorb, just to make sure I don't randomly die, seemed like a pretty good call. Oh, I just realized I shouldn't have gone down to one to play Endotha Trium because they had a meat hook in play. So if they played a self-sacrificing creature, I would have just died. So that was probably not a good idea. All right. On the draw here, can we just turn one? All I want to do is turn one Crucible Strip Zernorb Fastball on someone. Is that too much to ask? All right, I'll run this. They're mulliganing, okay. Makes this hand a little better. This hand's a little land light, but any black or white land, I get to scholar them, and uh, I get to start off by strip mining, which I think is worth it. Against a mulligan, just stripping their first land, maybe making it so it's pretty hard for them to play the game, seems good. And the strip mine, yeah, would have helped me cast some of these cards, but I think it's worth just doing that. Uh, I'll play that. It's okay, I've got a wasteland. So they must have just drawn shell dock because you don't lead on an untapped planes when you could lead on a shell dock. Okay, Sylvan's actually a pretty good draw. For not being a land, Sylvan means if I draw a forest, at least I'll, I should be in pretty good shape. Well, even if I don't draw uh, green mana, I still get, I have some good stuff to do here. Ooh, balance, flicker wisp, skyclave, counterspell. Wow, so they kept planes, planes, drew the shell dock. Must be nice. What do I do here? Um, I think I take the Skyclave. Because if I take Balance and they draw planes, they just play Skyclave and kill my Sculler. If I take Skyclave, they can, sure, they can cast Balance on the Tide Hollow Sculler, but, well, that's the only card they can cast right now. No, I actually am going to take Balance, because the, the reason I... I I, I rethought that was what if I just take Skyclave, they draw, don't do anything. I go land recruiter, then they just cast balance to kill my two creatures. That doesn't sound very good to me. Okay, they drew a blue, so they can counterspell my next play. I drew a green. I'm just gonna play recruiter of the guard, and if they want to counterspell it, they can. It's kind of tempting for them because they have a they have a a bunch of four mana double white cards so if they don't counterspell then draw planes they're kind of in a jam but here i kind of want to just get thalia i think i will no tithe taker is actually better than thalia that's like a thalia that only affects them all right let's get tithe taker basically i don't want to get an expensive card because i have a bunch of expensive cards and expensive cards are bad against uh counterspell but now I can play Tithe Taker to start things. And if they want to counterspell it, they can. Attacking does open me up to the Wandering Emperor if they draw planes, which they probably will draw planes. 
But, uh, oh, they didn't? Okay. Let's go Tithe Taker. They can choose not to counter it if they want, but I don't think they're going to. Yeah. And now I get to play Sylvan, which is nice because Sylvan is a way to get something on the board that doesn't get affected by balance. Hit. I don't think there's a reason to keep Sculler back. If they draw planes, they could still just play Skyclave and kill my thing. Okay, they didn't. So the counter spell's gone. All right. Use Sylvan. Oh, I definitely am keeping Wasteland. I'm at 20. I guess I don't want to run into getting balanced and get com getting completely destroyed. So let's put on top and then pay four life to keep the rest. Oh, actually, I should have put a, that was so stupid. I should have I didn't really look forward to whether I was going to what I was going to play this turn. So I am going to go wasteland your shell dock. But I should have played Oracle this turn. All right, let's send they have exactly Snapcaster. This is kind of annoying, but all right. And well, you know what? I, I I shouldn't compound my mistakes by making a, a bad play. Basically, I could have had an Eladomri's call in my hand for free, but whatever. Let's just play the play the Oracle here. Okay, so they're gonna pretty soon here get back. Uh, well, actually, I don't want to crack this. They're going to be able to Skyclave the Tidehold, but what I can do is if I keep Eladomri's Call, I can go Eladomri's Call, Eternal Witness, get back Wasteland. All right, let's just draw for turn. Uh, put on top, put on top. And this uses both my land plays, so I can't actually afford to do any of that. Oh, Oh, I actually messed that up, didn't I? I did. This can't get untapped green. I had to get a Dotha Triumph end of turn, but Eldarmer's Call is on top, so I couldn't actually make that play. All right, well, I'm still going to get the Eternal Witness, I think. Actually, maybe I just get Palace Taylor now. Yeah, that's fine. Crack this. Just get a Swamp. Just play Ancient Tomb off the top. Play Palace Jailer. They're going to get to balance at some point here, but I'm really not that worried about it. It's, it's going to be two turns away, and there's a chance that I get to assemble, uh, assemble Tron here with my uh, Crucible. Okay, so that yeah, that was a cascade of mistakes. Basically, not Sylvaning with Oracle, like not realizing I was going to play Oracle, led to me having Eldarmer's Call on top of my library instead of in my hand, which meant I couldn't crack Mire for Endotha Triumph end of turn, which means I couldn't Wasteland the Raugren Triumph this turn. Because now they're going to play Skyclave Apparition on Tide Hollow Sculler. I really don't see a way around that. And then they get Balance back. But it's not like Balance just ends the game or anything. Okay. Um, put on top. Put on top. So now, if I play lands, I, I'm going to lose them to uh, Balance. So how do I want to proceed here? I could also Flicker Wisp for something. But at this point, Flicker Wisping for Recruiter, I can get Eternal Witness, but that doesn't even, It's first of all, it's end of turn. So I kind of think they're at five cards. Maybe I'm supposed to just play as many cards as possible. Skull Clamp, the Palace Jailer. Play Elvish Reclaimer. I'm going to lose all these creatures, but I think that's okay. Play my land, play my land. And then now, pass the turn, and then now they can uh, they can balance, but they have a creature in play. I'm not going to let that creature leave play. If they attack me, I attack them back for a bunch. I have a metamorph coming. I'm going to go down to four lands, but I think that doesn't that that's doable. I'm just going to keep Oracle as my last card. This is going to die, so I'm going to draw two cards after balance resolves. Yeah, we're doing fine. We're, we're, we're managing it. And this is actually one of the reasons cards like Tide Hollow Sculler are so valuable. I was able to man sculpt my whole game plan every single turn knowing these are the cards in their hand. I mean, they could just pass the turn and leave Wanderer up, but then they every turn that passes, they run the risk of me just like strip mining a bunch of their lands or something. Or I guess there's no way to... 
the Tide Hall Skiller is well and gone, so there's no way for me to, to mess with their hand anymore. All right, we'll see what they can do. We know two of their six, no, three of their six cards, because we know they have balance in hand. Okay, they are casting balance. Sure, just let it resolve. I'm going to keep Godless Shrine, Forest, Forest. I think I keep, I'm at 13. Do I keep the Peatland? I think I just keep the Plains. Sack the rest. I, I'm not casting Yawgmoth for a while, and I think that's totally fine. They have to discard two cards. I almost wish I could, didn't draw off the Monarch, because I would rather them discard another card. And then I'm going to keep Oracle of Moldai as my only creature. So I lost four lands there. They lost two cards in hand, so they're up two. Then I lost three creatures, but then I immediately draw two. Oh, I guess they're going to make me trade off my Oracle, aren't they? So in that case, actually, because they have the Monarch, you remember, or they, they get to attack and I kind of have to block. In that case, actually, I think I keep Elvish Reclaimer. Otherwise, yeah, I guess I have to. Because otherwise they just attack with Skyclave. This deck has no instants in it, so I know that I'm not playing anything <laughs> anytime soon. They discarded Flicker Wisp and Elspeth's Sun's Champion. Okay, so if they have a removal spell now for the Reclaimer, like the Council's Judgment, the Reclaimer, they do get to take back the Monarch. Yeah, that's a, like a little annoying. Ah, no, or they just die. All right, their hand is Mind Twist and Wandering Emperor. Wait, they Marsh Flat. Oh, they got the wrong land. Sure. Uh, definitely like Thalia against them. I think I like everything here. I don't. This is another matchup. I don't think adding expensive sneak cards is really where I want to be. Do I want Regrowth against them? Not really. I think I'd rather. Like, kind of clunky cards are, are at less of a premium against a kind of blue-white Planeswalker control deck. Okay, so we played against black-white mid-range and blue-white control so far. The deck's adjusting nicely to both. Okay. Don't really want the Zorn Orb in the opener, but Tithe Taker and Metamorph is, I think, enough of a combo that I'm happy or enough, of, enough gas that I'm happy. Plus, the Zorn Orb kind of hanging out just means that uh, at some point it might just pop off, and they won't even know. They don't even know I'm about to combo. Ooh, are they going to pay the life? I'm just going to play into it, so you better not bluff. All right, we're going to get our Dotha Triumph, surely. Oh, Recruiter of the Guard. I like that one, too. Let's just lead with Tithe Taker, and then we can just go Recruiter next turn. They bluffed. They bluffed, and it didn't work. They thought too long. If you're going to do that, you snap it off. They played it, thought for a beat, and then played it untapped. Can't do it. If you got if you want to bluff, you got to just go for it. All right, well, now I'm going to play Oracle and hope they don't have a, a counter for that. Oh, and a Bloodstain Mire. Oh, and there's a Fast Bond. Oh, I like what I'm seeing. I'm just going to leave that one on top there. I don't really want to shuffle away Fast Bond when I have Oracle in play. So, I mean, maybe they're going to kill my Oracle now. I'm definitely not attacking with Oracle into uh, the Wanderer, so let's not do that. Draw, play my planes. Well, let's not play Fast Bond yet. Let's crack Bloodstained Mire. I think I get a tapped Godless Shrine. That's awkward, is it? No, not really, because now I get to go Nurturing Peatland. Here, let's play Fast Bond first. Nurturing Peatland. <laughs> Draw. Oh, I actually shouldn't have played Fast Bond first, funnily enough, because with Oracle out, the second land drop doesn't cause you damage, but with Fast Bond out, it does. So I could get Crucible and technically pop off if they don't have anything. Oh, they, they messed up on the Polluted Delta bad. They actually have to pay one mana to sack the Polluted Delta. Well, I think I just go for it here. I mean, Palace Jailer on top is a strong reason not to, but they haven't done anything so far. Right. Play a land. Mm. Crucible. Play Windswept Heath. Crack winds up teeth. Forest. Play Zernorb. Yeah, now I'm going to get to strip all their lands if they don't have anything. 
Because what I get to do is I get to loop fetch lands until strip mine's the top card of my deck. It might take a little while, but... <laughs> yeah. we're, we're in for in for a penny, in for a pound. This is sick. This is turn four. Turn four, by the way, I have millions of lands in play, but also I'm going to kill all their lands unless they do something to stop me. And so far they have not indicated they are doing anything to stop me. There's Wasteland. Oh, that, that'll, that'll basically do it. Wasteland, your Rafine's Tower. Wasteland. Wasteland, your Hallowed Fountain. Zernorb. This deck is... This combo's sick. Never mind. I take back every single thing I even thought about Zernorb. Wasteland. Land. Now I'm going to Wasteland this. They can't even... <laughs> they can't even do anything about that. Uh, sack the Ancient Tomb. Oh, let's... I guess it does not have to tap my mana first because... I get infinite mana. Let's just sack all my lands just to make sure I don't randomly die. Play my lands. This is so cool. Yep, and then I was going to Recruiter of the Guard for Thalia, play Thalia, and then they were just fully locked out. <laughs> Cube is amazing. I've never drafted a deck like exactly like this. You know, there's obviously, like, I've done some of these things. I've never assembled Zern or Fast Bond Crucible because the I've never played a cube before this particular iteration that had all three of those cards. And the combo of using that plus Oracle to tutor up a Strip Mine or Wasteland effectively by just shuffling until your top card's one of those, stripping all their lands, then playing the Recruiter of the Guard to get a Thalia, and then I think that literally locks them out. Well... Obviously, they don't have these cards in hand because they would have played them last turn. But I think in a theoretical world, you could go like land, cast Black Lotus through Thalia, sack Black Lotus, kill Thalia, play another fast mana card like combo off, like Underworld Breach combo style. But that, would, of course, required them to have five or six cards in hand that they clearly didn't have any of. But still, that was that was that was awesome. All right. Well, we're playing for a trophy now. So but I feel like this deck's kind of proven itself. Even if we don't get the actual trophy, though, of course. I'd like to get the actual trophy. That would be nice. Okay, on the draw here. And if I go Forest, Ancient Tomb, Land, Crucible, I could get, yeah, I could turn one. Or Forest, Fast Bond, you know, all that. I could, I could technically turn one someone. This hand's pretty good. We get a... Let's see. I... I don't think I need to cast Skull Clamp on turn one. Do I want to cast Skull Clamp on turn one? Uh, against a blue deck, actually, yes. Because what I can do is I can get Godless Shrine, because I need to get Godless Shrine or Endotha Triome. The main reason to get Endotha Triome is it saves me life, but I think against a blue deck, I'm not that worried about my life total. All right, they get a Looter, that's fine. They can do some Looterinoing. Are they going to daze me? Don't daze me, bro. So now I'm going to Recruiter of the Guard. What am I going to get? Palace Jailer, obviously a popular popular answer. Because I, I, I would need to kill that one. Because, of course, this takes back Monarch very easily. Could also get Oracle of Moldiah. Because that works kind of nicely with some of the stuff I'm doing. Oh, I'm very close to fast bonding them out. All I need is the fast bond. <laughs> I have the other two. Let's see. I mean, this also just might not resolve. We'll find out. Mm, yeah, I'm going to get the Palace Jailer. It's just so good if it works. Oh, and they didn't play anything, so they flipped their Werewolf. But I'm going to get to play two spells on my turn, so it flips back. <laughs> Zernorb coming up clutch. Y you do love to see it. Okay, they get to... Send here. I'm gonna go to 15. I mean, it seems like a decent chance they might counterspell Palace Jailer. I wonder if I should have gotten Tide Hollow Sculler actually. Because if Tide Hollow Sculler also gives me the mana to activate Fast Bond on Recruiter of the Guard, hmm. not sure. Not sure. Let's see. They discard an Ashen Rider. Oh, okay. That's kind of scary. I went to a Demir Signet. Okay, well, that makes me think the way is kind of clear for Palace Jailer here. I mean, we'll see, I suppose. Oh, uh, well, or not. They had the counterspell, sure. 
Yeah, I mean, so if I'd gotten uh, the Tide Hollow, they still would have counterspelled it, but I would have gotten to Skull Clamp the Recruiter. Not a big deal. The, the biggest issue would be if they then kill my Skull Clamp with this Ashen Rider and I no longer get to draw cards off it. I don't mind spending a little mana here. If I draw Fast Bond and they don't have another counter spell, I also have the combo because they're, they're not going to kill Zuranor with their Ashen Rider. Not that they even necessarily can get back Ashen Rider. I mean, there's a decent chance, of course. Shield Rid, okay. Well, that does punish me for Skull Clamp. There's Oracle. Yeah, let's start with Oracle, I think. Uh, Wasteland. N that doesn't really do too much. I can play the Nurturing Peat Land. Uh, do I want a Skull Clamp? I've already played my two lands off Oracle. So the question kind of becomes, do I want to just cast Skull Clamp or use Skull Clamp anyway? I would take four life off Shieldred. Yeah, I actually think, I think for mana reasons I do. I even have a Zern Orb if I need it. Also, if I drew Fast Bond, oh dang. Okay, I think I play the fast bond just to get it in play. And now they don't they don't they don't even know that I'm gonna crucible them. Uh we'll see. We'll see what they do. I feel like Skull Clamp might be the first card they kill here, but I actually don't know. They get to attack with Shieldred too, but I'm gonna block with Tithe Taker. And hope they don't have a counter spell, a discard spell, or a reanimate spell. I mean, I feel like that's not like, the, the biggest ask in the world. There's an Archon. Uh, well, that actually might be good for me. And the reason I say that is if they reanimate Archon instead of Ashen Rider, then I can actually beat Archon with Crucible Fast Bond. So we'll see. I draw, I go to four here. Oh, there's a Strip Mine. Yeah, let's start by playing Strip Mine. Strip Mine your island. They're going to tap it for a blue. Oh, they didn't even tap it for a blue. I mean, I think I just play the Crucible. I don't know. I don't really have a... These decks don't have tons of counter spells. They can't cast Cryptic anymore. Well, let's find out what happens here, shall we? <laughs> Are they trying to think of what's going to occur? They have four cards in hand. It's a lot of cards. They could also... Reanimate at instant speed their Ashen Rider to kill my Fast Bond or Zurin Orb. That is something I, I do worry about, yes. Reanimate's going to be a tough matchup for, for this deck. It just, they, they, ha they do some pretty powerful things on low mana counts and fairly quickly. So, like, disrupting them with Wasteland and Strip Mine's hard. Uh, they had the counter spell, and it's a fr the Force of Negation. <sighs> yeah. Yeah. All right. Yeah, that's going to be tough. Um, sneak still bad against Force of Negation. I don't want regrowth. Yeah, all right. Let's, I guess, hope that they don't counter my good spells next time. <laughs> they had counter spell and Force of Negation are the two cards we saw. Didn't actually see a reanimate spell, but I think it's pretty clear um, that they have reanimates in their deck it would make no sense for them not to Thalia I still think is good Cathar Commando we already saw Demir Signet and some of the reanimation spells are enchantments so that's also good Skyclave is just always good Yawgmoth is actually probably one of the weaker cards against them but it does kill the the, the suspicious stowaway okay I'll keep this hand I have Crucible Strip thanks to Elvish Reclaimer I am going to lead with Noble Hierarch though because I want to be able to just curve out a little better because if I go turn one and reclaimer turn two I can get strip mine and then I, I can't I can't get crucible into play without tapping strip mine and drawing a third land oh eh, this is fine I mean it's a little annoying because I have some good cards in hand that I wanted to combine nicely uh, they have necromancy yeah there we go I mean I don't know what they're gonna take they could take crucible which doesn't do anything right now but obviously does with elvish reclaimer they could take oracle because it does the most by itself they're probably going to take Crucible because they're likely rightfully scared of what happens if I just play a turn two Crucible. Unless they have Force of Negation, in which case maybe they don't. Though, <laughs> grief into Force of Negation is a lot of two for one yourself. 
Okay, they did take the Crucible. They didn't have another play, so let's go land. Oh, Recruiter of the Guard. Is that better than Elvish Reclaimer plus Eladomri's Call? What does Recruiter get here that I would, would want to play? I mean, no matter what, I really just want to draw a land for my uh, Elvish Rec for my Oracle. I don't see myself activating Elvish Reclaimer anytime soon, so let's just play Recruiter. And do I get something I can cast now? Do I get some? I feel like I don't want to get a card I can't cast right now because I already have Oracle, which is a good card I can't cast right now. I kind of want to just get Thalia. Because then I can just, if they don't kill my Noble, which if they kill Noble, everything kind of falls apart no matter what. If they don't kill Noble, then, oh, they don't have a land. All right, well, we're definitely playing Thalia. Even if I even if it delays Oracle by a turn, and then now I can go get strip mine with this. <laughs> All right. Yeah, this works great. Getting Thalia was genius. Now it's gonna be really hard for him to do anything. Okay, they can play Suspicious Stoy. That's the only card they could cast for the most part, I guess. Um Let's still play Oracle even though it delays us getting strip mine. Yeah, because if we drew any land we would be able to. Play this, and then smack for three. And they don't, I mean, they can assume I'm getting strip mine all they want. They won't know it until until I do. They're probably going to get to hit a land, or a decent chance of hitting a land drop this turn, right? Because they drew for their turn, plus they're going to draw off the stowaway. But I think they're still in a lot of trouble. I mean, they can cast an animate for grief. Oh, they could animate a big creature this turn. That's true. They could discard Archon and animate it. If they do that, that would actually be pretty annoying. Though I have a Metamorph on top, which means I just wouldn't use the, the Elvish Reclaimer. Because then I would Archon them back, and they can't even do anything to counter it with a Thalia in play. And I have a Recruiter of the Guard to sacrifice. Yeah, this this seems fine. They could, all dis they could also discard a... Well, if they're discarding a Signet and then cycling Miscalculation, I think they're pretty dead. Uh, I'm gonna get the strip mine. Palace Jailer? Oh, yeah. So let's go strip mine. Your island. I do know that they could, uh, well, they can't daze me anymore, so let's actually Elvish Reclaimer first, because I haven't played my second land here. Get Wasteland, play a Forest. Oh, and there's a Demonic Tutor. Nice. All right, that I think pretty close to does it. Because now I get to Palace Jailer. They could Force of Will, but this hasn't felt like a game where they had the card Force of Will. They would have Force of Will Thalia. I mean, they could have drawn it in the last turn or two, but it hasn't felt like that. That they that's something they have. So and then Smash, and then. We draw a Demonic Tutor, and they're pretty locked out by Thalia here. It's going to be pretty hard for them to do anything, especially since next turn I'm going to get uh, Eternal Witness for a Crucible and try to Crucible strip them out. So Demonic Tutor. Oh, no, I can't actually cast. Uh, there's no way I can get all of it back. So what do I do then? I may, I think I just Eladomri's call for uh, Tide Hollow Sculler then, because there's they, they can't have more than one card in their hand that that really causes me problems. Like they have one Deluge or one Animate spell, and that should be it. Also, I guess wait, I just have Lethal out. I can just attack for ten. The Elvish Reclaimer is a three four now. <laughs> All right, well. I guess getting Sculler was good because now I get to take a look at their hand <laughs> if they don't concede. They might just be countering the the, uh, the 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 they might be counting up the damage and then just scooping up the cards. All right, game three for the trophy here. Reanimator, good deck. Uh, yeah, I'm ready to roll. I guess. Let's hope uh, hope we get a fast one. I think that their deck is pretty good against mine. Okay, uh, I'm going to keep this hand. Uh, 
So turn two. Do I play Sylvan Library or do I play Thalia? I hope they don't play the Stowaway. Ugh. Oh no, Rakdos Signet. Okay. I get my Endotha Triome. Land. I feel like I have to play Sylvan. The problem with playing Thalia is if I play Thalia, then uh, don't draw a land, I can't play any spells. That seems... And they played a Signet too, so the odds that uh, Thalia is stopping them from casting spells is not super high. Yeah, they could have cast that anyway. They wouldn't have been able to do both. Oh, gross. Okay. Dang, that's a good start off for them. All right, let's draw. Oh, Skyclave is nice. Okay. All right, all right. I'm just going all in here on keeping, keeping stuff. I'm just going to sky... Oh, I can't skyclave the token, right? All right, well, I'll skyclave the fable to stop them from drawing anything or discarding anything. Though they're getting pretty close to just casting whatever it is they need to cast. I guess I have to block here and they get a 3-3 three, three out of the deal. Yeah, I'm not liking this. Not one bit. They're one man away from casting an Archon. They've accelerated three times. I'm pretty dead in here, I think. We'll, we'll see, we'll see. I think I lead with Oracle here as little as I like it. I assume they're just going to counter it, but I mean, I, I can't really do anything about that. <clears throat> I guess I can hope they don't have a ton of action in hand. It's not that many things they could have in hand that would be bad, you know, good for me. Like, they just have a lot of mana. Okay, they're going to get an Oracle. Okay, and they hit a land. Mesmeric Fiend. Okay. I don't like it, but... Let's see. I could play Augur. Play a land off the top. So why don't I go... Put on top. Put on top. Start with... Augur. I mean, I'm assuming they don't have anything at this point. It's pretty hard to imagine winning if they have anything. Play my land. I guess play a Thalia. Well, in that case, I should just play the Zern Orb first. Play a Thalia. Demonic Tutoring doesn't seem like it really does anything, because if they just Mesmeric Fiend, whatever I tutor for. Um, their top card is Archon. Okay, so we know it's coming. Yeah, they can... And they have eight mana. So unless I unless I mess with their mana, they're gonna get to arc on me. They're gonna take my demonic tutor, I suspect. Fortunately, they're also their mana, them having no non-basics makes my like them having a worse mana base by having all basics makes my wasteland worse. Which is fine. I mean, I'm not I'm not saying their mana base is bad. It would be better if they had non-basics, but it actually does protect them here. They took the interesting, they must have force of negation in hand. I'm just going to take it going to five here. It doesn't really matter. It's funny that Thalia is kind of constricting me. Tide Hollow Sculler doesn't really do much because it's the top of the cards on the top of their deck. I, mean, I go to two from the Archon. I mean, I might have to just bite the bullet. I, I don't think I can stop them from Archoning. I could, I can't even, yeah, I can't even strip mine to stop them. So in that case, I'd rather have a green land, I think. Um, demonic tutor play fast bond doesn't doesn't seem great. I could also skull clamp first. Let's let's just lead with tide hollow sculler. Get their last card, which I kind of think is force of negation, but obviously it could be wrong. Oh, it's ash and rider, which they're actually really close to casting too. Sure. Okay, play my land. Off the top, play Skull Clamp. I think I Skull Clamp away the Thalia, funnily enough. It's not really hurting them. Draw my two. If I drew Fast Bond, oh, there's Crucible. All right, so let's Skull Clamp the Augur. The reason I'm Skull Clamping Augur is uh, now I can trade for the, uh, the Illusion Token. Oh, they drew a Force of Negation. Okay. Okay. So they're going to draw Force of Negation off the Archon here. And I have to hope, I guess I'll know what their cards are. So I hope the next card isn't a blue card. Or, or Well, no, they can't play it this turn unless they hit land land. 
in a row, and one of them has to be an island. Sacrifice this. Discard Godless Shrine. Swamp. Okay, the, their top card better not be an island. Oh, I, I would have had Crucible Fast Bond. <laughs> this is so painful. I would, I would have, if they hadn't literally hit force into two lands off the top, I would have gotten to go DT, Fast Bond, Crucible, gain infinite life. I guess I wouldn't have Augur in play. Okay, well, I'm going to have to try to figure out how to win this game. I guess what I can do is I can maybe metamorph their Archon of Cruelty. Mm, I like this attack. They probably shouldn't attack... <sighs> I kind of think I have to leave the Oracle around because I, I want to sack the fewest number of lands possible. Zern or my wasteland. Oh, I can't believe it. Brutality. There's the strip mine. Oh, okay. I found the strip mine. Draw in a metamorph. Okay, okay. Hold on, hold on. Yes, uh, put on top, put on top. Let's see. Land. Strip, strip your island. Float your mana. Do it, whatever. Mm -hmm. Okay. Let's see. Demonic Tutor. Oh, I have enough mana to do it all. So Demonic Tutor. Get Fast Bond. Zern or Bland. Zern or Bland. Okay. Uh, play Fast Bond. Land. Go to four here. So, okay, this is, it's still not over, but this actually, it's actually going to be interesting. Crucible. I mean, I should win this game because now what I get to do is I get to gain infinite life get infinite mana, metamorph, I think I metamorph their Archon, and then that's the only extra card I get to draw, but who knows, maybe my top card's good. And when I Archon them, they have to sack Oracle, they can't sack Mesmeric Fiend. And then, so let's let's just do this. This, is, this, might, this game might take a little bit of time, so let's, let's make sure we don't waste our time. All right, strip mine. Strip mine your swamp, strip mine, strip mine your swamp, strip mine, strip mine your swamp, strip mine. All right. Oh, this is going to be a sick ending if this if we can pull this off. They are going to get to Archon and attack us next turn, but it doesn't matter because we can gain infinite life. For hold on, let's Zern orb this just to. Two. Zern orb, Zern orb. Yeah, we have plenty of time here. This combo actually works pretty quickly, which is nice. It's just got to make sure I don't click randomly click and, and kill myself. That would be a that would be a disaster. Okay. Germs. And they're right not to concede here because it's not a deterministic win. I get to kill all their lands, though they have all, all, all the, the random baubles. Um, so I guess, yeah, there's nothing better I can metamorph than the Archon. So let's Archon them down to, I mean, presumably they're sacking Oracle and discarding Ashen Rider. If my top card is like a Flicker Wisp or an Eternal Witness, we can really pop off. Come on, Eternal Witness or Palace Jailer. Any of the like the good cards, basically. Oh, no, I did mess up. Oh, they scooped. I should have Bloodstained Mired my deck to get make sure there's no targets. Not that there's very many left. I didn't have Windswept Teeth, but let's go back to the game real quick. So, uh, so yeah i didn't have heath so i could have actually i didn't have any never mind i didn't have anything to fetch left because i have my godless shrine and my swamp and endoth triumph already out so i could have i was going to draw a card i want to see what it was elvish reclaimer so the end of this game was going to be me gaining infinite life i would have probably gone up to 40 or 30 or something 
They have no lands in play. They have to sack Oracle because they can't give me deranged hermit, and I don't think they want to sack Archon. They discard Angel of Despair. They draw Atroxa, so they have Force of Negation Atroxa up. They don't have Oracle in play, remember, so they don't get to play lands. They attack with Archon. I would have sacked Elv Elvish Reclaimer and probably just taken it and not lost my Archon. I don't care about that. Then I'd get to attack them back, still strip mine all their lands. I'd have two draw steps. Oh, I would have also put Skull Clamp on the Reclaimer. Yeah, I've, I was going to get there. Fast Bond, Zerno, Crucible, that's game. Oof. Doesn't get much better than that. This is peak cubing. Uh, thanks for watching. Thanks for uh, supporting the channel, kicking things off with a lot of awesome cube videos. This is near the top of the range, but plenty more to take a look at. So uh, I will see you next time. And uh, as always, I'm LSV, and we're playing some cube here. Thanks for watching.